Because I think... Hmm. Thinking about it, it's the tickets to St. Louis that we're going to have to think about. We still don't know the password to the Tin Spoon, so we can't get in there. Um, Mrs. Green is just completely out of it. I think we're going to have to find Mr. Green before we get any more information about there. The front door had a bell on top of it. Let's head to the police station then. I always dressed, dreaded visiting the PD after I'd flown the coop, and I was in no mood right now. But if Shipman did know something about Green's note, I had to chase it up. I waved down a taxi cab as on my way. I thought I might talk with the driver to pass the time. He started talking about boxing. My brother was travelling out east last fall, won a couple of tickets to go to a boxing match in a dice game. Wouldn't you know it? It's the Dempsey fight. I'll ask about it. I asked about the fight. Dempsey and Furpo? That was the heavyweight bout of the century. El Toro de las Pampas, he said with an exaggerated bellow. The big bull comes up from Argentina and tries to knock our boy off his game. Good old Jack came back. Dempsey was knocked out of the ring. I counted. He flew into a typewriter and nearly lost his head. The driver nodded enthusiastically. Sure, sure. That's what, it, that's what makes it so exciting. Jack gets knocked on his back, returns to give old Toro a thwack. Quite the poet, I said as we rolled to my destination. He smiled. Time to get out, Mac. I nodded and left the taxi cab. The North Beach Station was SFPD headquarters, also poetically baptized the Hall of Justice. The building dominated the corner of Kearney and Washington in Chinatown. We built, rebuilt after the 1906 earthquake. I thought it looked even more sour than it had before. I showed to the young bobbed girl behind the large oak desk. She must have been new because we shared no recognition of one another. I asked for Shipman, she motioned me to a chair as she pressed a pearl button. I sat down and she disappeared through a frosted door. I rolled another cigarette to pass the time. Between puffs, I thought about my history at the department. I imagined the station captain would have been furious had he known I was there. I did, after all, break a tumbler with the help of another officer's temple. That had been my last day on the force. Oh dear. It wasn't long before Shipman walked out of the frosted door. Samuel Shipman smiled when he saw me. He had always been helpful to, help to me in my days on the force. Working closely with Lewis, he'd acquired the habit of bouncing theories my way. He judged officers purely on results, and because of that, he was one of my few fans. We exchanged brief pleasantries before he said, Wouldn't come here for glad handing. He had had a habit of removing the subject from his sentences. What needs doing? I explained my case to him. He scoffed when I mentioned Connor Green. <laughs> Working for that pinhead? Got a good mind to run him up a flagpole. I just need to know about this letter. I handed him the note Green had given me and explained its context. After looking it over, Shipman tried to stifle a laugh. Complete bunk, he said. See the symbol in the corner? Mark of the Black Hand Gang. Except, Black Hand letters are always ransom letters, not threats. No foothold on this coast anyhow. Never been one in California. So the letters are fake? Shipman nodded. Someone's trying to imitate the Black Hand. I grunted a sigh and noted what he'd said. Don't know if Green is getting one over you, or if someone else is pulling Green's leg, but having more drift, more dirt on the man couldn't hurt, especially if he's your client. I agreed. I'm trying to dig through his past. You got any bunk on him? No. From Oakland's all I knew. But I can do some more digging. I thanked him for that. Under a pile of vice, though, it might take me a while. Why don't I telephone when I find something? I had no office where I could see messages, but I dreaded returning to the station. I told him to call Southern Coffee. Just leave anything with Franklin Conway, I instructed. He said that was alright. We traded goodbyes and I went back to the station's entrance. Hmm. Now I knew the letter was fake and Shipman was looking into Green's past for me. I just needed to chase up the bootlegging lead. I stepped into the street and thought about where to go. Okay. Try going back to Green's house. Mrs. Green had been in a heavy opium days, and I doubted her delirium would be short-lived. She wouldn't be useful to me, but I might still get something from searching the house. Oh, I don't know if this is going to be helpful. Now let's try. I might have missed something. We'll just go there. I think I'd explored everything, but it might be that things open up. Let's talk to the taxi man again. Driver began talking baseball. You know, he started, my bet is that the Seals could play in the majors. His voice had a high pitch and was just nasally enough to be irritating. I think we'll just tune out. He droned about the Seals for what felt like an eternity. My eyes glazed over and I was nearly asleep when he finally shouted, We're here! The Green's apartment was a section of an old blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. 
Um, didn't get a response. Right. I just still don't have the password. So I can't do anything at Tin Spoon. I hadn't given the correct... I knew I'd never get in the place until I said the magic words. I don't know them yet, so I can't get in. No, I've tried talking to him about the password, and he doesn't know. Let's go to Southern Coffee. Um, I could go see if he had any messages. Of course, if I was stuck on the case, stiff drink with Frankie could give me some hint as well. Um, and of course, talk to the taximan. Driver asked if I'd heard the new radio program, WLL Showboat. Once I said I hadn't, he launched into praise about the floating palace of wonder. You see, there's this captain, and his first and second mates, right? They go around sailing all the rivers of the US. Of course, they're terrible at running the ship, doing things like... He broke his sentence with a chuckle. Hanging laundry in the paddle wheel? Can you imagine? He let out a bellied laugh. Well, anyhow, they also play music from the different places. Twangs from the south, trumpets from Chicago, and they run it weekly. How about that? How about that? I replied. Stepped out of the taxi cab at my destination. I left my driver still laughing to himself. Uh, Southern Coffee was an automatic diner, blah blah blah. Frankie was still behind the bar. I wonder, it wondered if Shipman had left any messages for me. Of course, if I was stuck on the case, a long drink with him might be helpful. Doc. What's eating you? Ask about message messages. Uh, any messages, Frankie? What do you mean by that? Well, I told Sam Shipman, an old contact on the force, to leave any dirt with you if he found it. Oh, so now I'm your bartender and your secretary. Say, if I become your housemate, will you at least pay me? So I'm guessing you haven't heard anything? Nothing yet, Miss Chief. Shipman's supposed to call you about Green. What have you got so far? No real breaks to speak of. Well, alright, I'll let you know if Shipman gives me a call. Ask about my notes. Um. I'm ask about the password. Any ideas? Uh, the Tin Spoon doorman kept me outside the joint. He wants a password, but I have no idea. Fill full your cups, feel no distress. All our, uh, at all our great thoughts, shrinking less. He says, uh, Who knew gangsters were the riddling type? Frankie laughed. All our great thoughts, shrinking less, he said. What? Um, I was puzzled. Uh, he turned and grabbed a bottle from his shelf. Vintage stuff, this strangely used it as their code. He handed me the bottle and I read the back of the label. Fill full your cups, feel no distress. At all our great thoughts, drinking less will do a good deed nevertheless. Okay. Okay, okay, so this isn't necessarily hints. This actually might be, I actually have to come back every so often for evidence anyway. Ah, okay. So the password was the poem from this vintage label. I now knew what I had to say to the doorman. Uh, never mind. So I've got that. And so my sweep from away from the bar. Let's head there then. We have to go by the stairs, of course. There's no door in this one. So now we go to the Tin Spoon Lounge. We'll go there. Uh, let's talk. You hear the latest about King Tut? Apparently Carter found the sarcophagus a few weeks back. Okay, so this must be in the 30s then. Fairly sure that was the 30s. Maybe 35? No, I don't know. We talked about the discovery. Uh, Carter had first unearthed the tomb a couple of years earlier, and he'd begun to slowly catalogue its contents. New treasures were constantly in the papers, notable for their intricate and expensive gold workings. That whole mess gives me the chills, he said. Digging up old corpses and taking their stuff? Like that won't bring some curse or, or other on those grave diggers. I disagreed. Those discoveries help us... Uh, help teach us about the fascinating culture of ancient Egypt. We only know the past from an old Roman text. These tombs give us the first glimpse into, into a new perspective. This driver shook his head. Seems to me we're more pirate than scholar. Or do I know anyhow? I just won't be the first in line to crack open that mummy. He let out an involuntary shiver. We came to my destination, and I hopped down the taxi cab. Knock again. I again wrapped, wrapped my knuckles on the metal door. The panel stood open, and the same dark eyes stared down at me. Fill full your cups, feel no distress, at all our great thoughts, shrinking less, he repeated. He continued to stare unwaving. We now have... Is that going to be in statements? Uh, we'll do a good deed nonetheless. 
Although Gadeen, nevertheless, I recited the line that Frankie had shown me on one of the bottles. Wait here, came a gruff response. The panel stood shut, and I heard footsteps walking away. I rolled a cigarette and waited. After a quarter of an hour, the panel opened again. Bars closed, but you can shoot Paul in the upstairs room, said the eyes. He pulled the door ajar so I could see a set of metal, metal stairs. I walked up the stairs and opened a thin wooden door to the billiards room. It was much more than I expected for a gangster's paradise. The only light came from the hanging lamps above the billiard table. The haze of cigarettes darkened the room's corners. A couple tall chairs were placed around the billiards table. The rooms were lit only by the dangling lamps above the billiards table. The rack on the wall held five cues. Clean ashtray next to an emptied glass on the table in the corner. A bottle of unlabeled wine sat on the tomb. When I sniffed, it smelled of strong spice. The pool table was the focus of the space. The light reflecting from its smooth green surface tinted the den. I saw a tall, broad-shouldered man playing the table by himself. Based on Frankie's description, I gathered this was Tiny Paul. I cleared my throat to get him to look at me, then followed with a casual, Are you ever going to take a shot? He stood up straight, rested his cue on the table, and looked at me sideways. It was the petulant look of a boy forced to play with his youngest sibling. Hello, he sighed. His voice was deep. Apparently, Ferry only hired baritones, but it had no gravel. It echoed slightly around the small room. I imagined he could have huffed and puffed the entire block to rubble. I like watching them, he said, nodding to the balls on the table, thinking through my options. I'd never shot much pool, but I thought he might like me more if I feigned interest. I considered lying to him, telling him that I played a lot. Eh, I'll stick to cards. I didn't lie to him just that. Stud, blackjack or bridge? He asked hoarsely. I raised an eyebrow and he showed a sheepish grin. A gambler plays them all. He continued after cracking his knuckles, but I don't think you're here for a game. I'll just get straight to the point. I asked about Green. How's the gamble on that wine? He, he grunted. Green. He grunted. <laughs> Full stop. He grunted. Green setting it up. Where the muscle? What more is there? You like Green? I asked. The wrinkles on his brow deepened. Like or dislike, it don't matter. You don't like him, then. Sometimes. I work with what I'm given, and he's given, given us a good leave. I suppose that's why you're here, Malone. So he'd known me, too. The doorman must have looked me up. The bay talks fast. Anyhow, he said, eyeing the billiard table. Do you need anything else from me? If you want something, better be better be specific. Mobs has never failed to grate my nerves. He wouldn't tell me anything unless I pushed him for what I already knew. Uh, right. Okay. Let's not ask about that. Well, let's ask about the letter. I mean, we've got to ask this to everyone, pretty much. Know anything about this note? I asked and pulled out the letters. Tiny Paul looked at the page and left with his whole body. So there is a letter. Green shaking over that. I'm not losing sleep, though. Look, Green and I aren't best pals, but nobody will touch him with our protection. And none of us sent it to him, or else I'd know about it. Anything else? Right, well... Nothing to really ask about here. Can I ask about St. Louis ones? I considered telling Tiny Paul about Green's tickets to St. Louis, but if these mobsters thought that Green was about a blue town, they'd be liable to dig him an early grave. I still needed to solve my case, and for that, I needed a living employer. Maybe after it all cleared up, I'd mention Green's tickets. I must have been lost in thought because Tiny Paul asked, Can I get back to this already? I'm motioning to the pool, pool, pool table. Hmm. I don't think there's anything... Right. There's nothing here I can really ask about. Oh, yeah, I can ask about statements, of course. Let's ask about the Redstone Stable. Know anything about Redstone Stable? I asked. Heard the name, he replied. But why all the gossip? He could tell you more about himself. You won't give me anything on it? No, why would I do that? He shook his head and asked. Anything else? Because I'm trying to help stop your comrade getting killed. Oh, of course, Mrs. Green. Green's wife is a torture here, I asked. With the pipe she's got built in that body, she's the reason most fellas come keep coming back to the joint. Okay, not useful. Let's ask about Redstone Stable not doing it. I tried to work something about Stable from Tiny Paul, but he would stub my brow beating without letting anything slip. Hmm. Hmm. Says the letter is a forgery from the Black Hand. 
You know Green's not as a fake? I said. So somebody's goofing Green? He laughed totally. Or maybe Green's just toying with you. Anything else? Huh. Right. Get anything further from him. Right, I need to discover Green's past. Let's ask about him then, for this run running thing. You gave him Green the dough, I asked him? That's right. We gave him cash to get the supply going. You already gave him the money? Aren't you afraid he's going to run out on you? There's the tickets. I suppose you know less than I thought. Well, just set you straight. That kid's right under my thumb. No way he'd get out of town alive before setting up our source. He turned his gaze back onto the pool table. Anything else? Okay, still don't know anything about him. Hmm. You've got people... Ooh. Ooh, that's interesting. Is that why Mrs. Green is following him? What's that, got, what's that got to do with any of this? He asked. I tried to press him further, but got nothing from him. Very interesting. Yeah, I doubt Mrs. Green's going to be much use. Basically, I'm not going to be going to Mrs. Green, because there's nothing here. There's nothing... Hmm... Right. I can ask about threatening letter, but it's kind of already showed him. I don't think you're gonna you're gonna know anything about this, are you? What do you want with that? Something else you want? I don't think so. Nothing in my home is gonna be useful. Southern coffee's not useful. The barber shop, not so useful. So can I ask you about the mirror? I have no idea what you're asking with that, Malone, he said. When I pointed to an entry in my notes, nothing I said about that entry got anything more out of him. Get about done here. Ask him about that. We'll do a good need nevertheless, I repeated to Paul. Why make an old liquor's slogan your password? Uh, Paul smiled. An old liquor song slogan? That's rich. Now I thought... Uh, you investigators were supposed to be learned. I raised a questioning brow. It's called The Drinking Song, a poem by Thomas Hardy, an old Brit. Ask more about the poem. It's all, uh, it's all about man thinking we're the top of the chain, slowly understanding we aren't. All our thoughts, all our theories amount to nothing. We're just apes floating in the wide ocean of space. How can you possibly cope with that? How do we even know what we are now? It doesn't matter. Take your mind off it, have a drink, do something good. Not a bad code, if you ask me. I tilted my head, neither agreeing nor disagreeing but simply impressed by Paul's knowledge of Victorian poetry. All right, that's enough of a lesson. Is there, any t is there something else you wanted? Or, or can I get back to this? He motioned to the table. Okay. So I've already asked about that. Don't think, anyth don't think there's anything here that's useful. The tin spoon. Hmm. Clean ashtray. What's that got to do with any of this? Uh, I think we'll give up. Didn't have anything else to say to him, so he cracked his knuckles, arched over the table, and resumed learning up shots. 